Hello again, Paul from uh, Plymouth, um, following my last video. Um, just thought this video would be good to show you the all the hardware I have, um, all the choices I've made eventually with uh, the hardware, runs the tank, heaters, filters, um, lighting. Um, Apologise for the state of my tank, got a bit of algae going on where they've just been fed all the small particles are flying around it does not look its best right now i'm sure very experienced aquarists fish keepers will know tanks go through times like this tomorrow morning it'll be clear as a bell just ordered a higer aqua magnetic scraper which well, i didn't really want one but it looks really good and i i was listening to a podcast um earlier today and um mentioned it so i looked online and it looks really good so i've just bought one um to clear all this persistent algae when i got this tank it was uh, didn't see it at first but it was quite scratched at the front I did quite a lot of um uh cleaning with toothpaste and a toothbrush apparently it's supposed to clear it off quite well um, it did a bit, but then filled it up, got it going, and then you notice it, as soon as it's full of water, you notice it quite a lot. Um, I don't mind. I, I like my fish tank. I really, really like my fish tank. And um, uh, keep it clear, and it'll be even easier with a new magnet scraper um, to uh, to do that. Um, so the hardware I have on my tank, I mean, this is what the tank looks like. <clears throat> So my wife, I, there's a bit of compromise involved in this massive grip of four foot, 240 litre fish tank um, got shoved in the living room. Um, so a bit of compromise where she decorates the middle part with all the rubbish she wants to decorate it with. Um, it's Easter right now, so it's gonks, apparently. Um, yeah, so it's a fluval tank. It does what I want really well. I don't want any bigger. No, I probably would have bigger. Um, certainly don't want any smaller. Um, I've had fish tanks in the past. This, it seems to me, this has been up to now, touch wood. This has been um, easy to keep a track of. Uh, I've had smaller tanks. I have smaller tanks and it's harder when you have things like an ammonia spike. Um, things go downhill quickly. But having a nice big fish tank um, certainly helps with that. Um, so heaters. I have two heaters. Um, that one's an Oase, I believe. I can't remember what the other one is. Uh, you can see them there. Um, that one's actually... Suckers have failed on that one. I need to sort that one out. Um, I run two heaters uh, because back along, well before Christmas, I had a heater failure. Um, it took me a while to notice actually, my, my tank went a bit cold, um, so I was like, right, that's it. I'm getting two heaters, so I got a little uh, one um, to accompany the big one. Um, and then I set up my little tank with shrimp in, and I decided, why do that? Um, I need to um, get a big one and then use the little heater in the little tank. As you can see, I don't know what I'm doing maintenance-wise here, I've got a couple of weights plant weights i need to sort out the end of the heater there there's a sucker under there main problem is i don't want to mess around with the tank too much because i've got the little baby parrots in there um which i was you can see one just over here there you go cute little thing i was um dead worried about those tapping those tanks basically i went and picked those um parrots up from Somebody advertised them, so I went and picked them up. They advertised them as being an inch long, and they are quite of an inch at most. Well, they're probably about twice as big as they were when I picked them up. I put them in a little breeder box, but I knew they couldn't stay in there for very long. So after a couple of days, I was like, well, I, I covered the end of the fish tank that faces the window with a towel and kept it dark for a day. Um, and then because I have... Um, the smart light I have, I was able to wrap up the lighting until 
they seemed comfortable and to be honest they haven't had any trouble from any of my other fish um, they had chased a little bit but they soon go off and hide so that's one tip I would say definitely have a spare heater um, over here I had this since the beginning um, well probably since the beginning I've got a little skimmer filter here um, it's it's working hard over there but it does its job it basically pulls in water from the top of the tank um, where all your food or whatever settles or your, your leaves your dead leaves accumulate gradually with the flow of the tank it pulls it into there and um, filters it through it's got a couple of little um, sponges um, in there um, I know. <laughs> um, and um, I just clean that out quite regularly when it's all gummed up um, it obviously does a job because it's always gummed up so um, yeah it's, it's kind of covered a bit in algae and things I need to have a bit of a clean out um, I have air stones so I have a air filter which for the record in my not very tidy tank I find that's the best thing to do with an air pump is to hang it on a hook hang it in midair and it's not going to vibrate against anything it makes minimal noise um, I ran a load of tubing and I've got an air stone I can't work out for the life of me why but this side here doesn't bubble very well if at all it is today um, and the main of the air comes out there I have no idea why that happens but this over here is farther away from the air stone than here but for some reason it does um it works really well I I should set up a uh, basically I put it on a smart plug I put it on an Alexa smart plug um, and I say Alexa bubbles off okay and the bubbles go off um, I could put it on a schedule I can say things like um, put the bubbles on for one hour um, and I just do that every now and then really when I'm when I'm not in the room, because you can hear the air pump a little bit, when I'm not in the room, overnight, you know, whatever I feel, if I feel that they need a bit more oxygen in the tank, or if there's people coming around, I'll shove that on, because it looks kind of good. Um, and then my Pride and Joy pump. So my dad decided that the old Eheim uh, fil corner indoor inside filter I had, um, could do with being replaced for a better one and I said all right okay get me that for Christmas and he did um, so here it is under here it's a all seasons EF2 plus um, and it's amazing it, I think it's great it, the moment I started using it my water went crystal clear clearer than I've ever seen before and it's brilliant it's got um three trays in there so you fill it with filters and sponges um bio balls and um those ceramic round things that i use for plant weights um in bags um and it it feeds out there on a spray bar and takes it in there um, the spray bar I don't like to have above the water it's a bit low actually I've, I've been uh, using some of the water to establish my tank to raise the fry the angel fry hopefully um, and I haven't replaced it yet um, I don't like to have the spray bar above the water um, because of the noise the water makes and this is the living room and watch TV and things um, I have that sat under the water um the, the the filter comes with gray tubing um which by the way can looks green tubing which by the way looks not so good uh when on the side because it goes all brown and be in there uh, but that's okay because um that's nature that's all the bacteria and things all the stuff that goes in and out of that filter and uh, grows in the tubes is just natural, it's what's supposed to happen. 
the more I film, the more I think how desperately I need to clean this tank. Um, in my not very clean cupboard, you'd think for this I would uh, clean a bit. I've got all my foods in there, um, which I'll go over another day. I've got a bank of power, which really, when I think about it, isn't very clever because um, if the water tank, if the tank was to leak, it would probably leak down to there. Um, just pray that that never happens. Um, and all bits and pieces there, spare filters, spare sponges, pipe, everything I need, net, bits and pieces, medicines, that really need to be tidied up. Um, test kit, very important. Uh, did one tonight, all of the measurements are absolutely perfect. That's the um, Nutrafin old box. Nutrafin test kit, just all the bottles and everything. It's very good. Um, let me little bog standard thermometer up here. I don't think there's any better way than to have a bog standard thermometer to tell you the temperature. Run it about 26 degrees centigrade, um, which uh, the fish seem to like. The, the plants do quite well when you don't have problems with holy leaves. Um, from a decoration point of view, uh, the wood. So um, I did a bit of research. Um, I was looking at the price of wood and I was like, oh my word, this is, uh, you can spend some crazy money on decorative wood. I was like, well, I really fancy trying. So um, we went scouting for wood. So uh, we went down to some fields and things and the first bit of wood I put in was this bit of wood. This bit of tree tree branch here. Um, it took ages to prepare it. As you can see, it's cable tied to a stone. I still believe, but I don't want to test it, but I still believe that if um, it wasn't cable tied to that stone a year or so on, year and a half odd on, um, I believe it would float to the top still, which is mental. I um, I soaked it, I brushed it, I got rid of the bark, I cleaned it all off, I um, chopped it, uh, I did all sorts of things to try and um, get it to stay um, in the tank, uh, got it looking the way I wanted and decided to um, Tie it to connect an Anubis to it, Anubis, Anubis plant to it, and as you can see, it's gone mental. Uh, that Anubis is um, been propagated once already, so I've taken off um, a part of it, cut it through its, I can't remember what it's called, um, its main part, and then moved it onto another part which is behind there. As you can see, that's another plant over there. Um, and that one's gone mental as well. And as you can see, it looks like both will be flowering. That's the first time that one at the back has flowered. Um, I've got bamboo. So I had four bits of bamboo. We went to um, can't remember the the shop's name. The Swedish company the Swedish um, furniture company oh my god I can't remember what they're called um, and uh, we bought some of the lucky bamboo and stuck it in there um, mixed results really I screwed it at the bottom I screwed it to a piece of slate uh, one part kind of melted one one bamboo stem melted uh, pretty quickly um, the other um, the other seem to get eaten stripped and eaten by the fish those two are holding except one's gone wonky um, because it's obviously come away at the bottom from the screw a little bit and the other one's all right 
the, the, the algae has got to them a little bit. And if we look at the top, you can see that it grows lovely out of the water. It doesn't um, grow in the water very well. You can see uh, there as well, the other one protrude out. Um, no, I really like the Lucky Bamboo, but it's not doing its best, to be honest with you. Uh, another piece of driftwood and another piece of uh, scavenged stone. Um, the stone is on it like that because that piece just would not, I don't even know what type of wood it is, but it would not, um, it would not sink. I don't, I think it would still float. This part I did get to sink, this nice branch here. Started off much bigger, I wanted a massive piece of wood. I ended up chopping it away. We, we scavenged it from a from a lake and it stunk to high heaven. It, we, basically what, what I do is I put the wood in a bath water and I keep replacing the water all the time and I keep scraping the wood um, to get sort of in the bark and everything to clear it out and make it look nice as I, I think it looks nice. Um, uh, and that went on for months, but originally it was a horrid, disgusting smell because it had been hanging around in the mud and everything. Um, and now the it's, it's nice, and the clown loaches often rest on it, which looks really good. Pleco, my pleco seems to bite on it, and the shark seems to like I don't know, just takes feed on some biofilm off it. Um, I assume it's biofilm. I don't see it. it nibbles across it so i assume it does and then this little piece of wood here um has as you can see i, I again I, I i submerged it and bathed it for months and then decided it'd be cool to um drill it out and make a little tunnel um with a bit in the middle there cut it all out um, the clown loaches enjoy going in it. How long they'll be able to do that for because they're getting bigger and bigger, I don't know. Um, and um, they, they swim through it and it gives a little place for the little fish to hide if they need to. I worry about, um, about them uh, getting stuck, but I haven't seen that yet, to be honest. Um, I've got a little coconut there. Let me clean this tank, boy. Um, a little coconut there. Um, I had a little tip the other day to the coconut half shells that the birds eat. You could clean that out and use cut a little doorway and use that for for that. So I'm going to do that with a couple. I'm um, sticking more coconut shells in there. That was originally covered in moss, but the fish destroyed that. Like my fish destroy everything, especially the clown roaches. Um, the, the crebensis often seem to nest or whatever nest, I don't know whether that's the word, but they seem to lay eggs in there. I, with my crebensis, I had one um, spawn, which are some of the ones that are in here, grew them up to adulthood, like that one there. Um, Try to get rid of them. Nobody wants crebensis, it seems. That's mum. Nobody wants crebensis, so and get rid of them um, and ever since we've failed they've, they, they've buddied up tons of times and they fail to ever get babies to adulthood so I don't know why um, they did it the first time and they can't do it again but there we go that, that's dad male in my tank he's a beast um, and then uh two plant pots that I bought from a garden centre. Um, I thought that the Cremensis would use them. They don't, but I they make a little, nice little thing and the albino corys quite often hang around in there, all the clown roaches. Uh, my little castle that came with the tank. Um, I like it. Um, Pleco likes it as he hangs around in there all the time. Cause that's what he does in there. Oh, they keep just he is there in that opening you can see a fin if the angle fish gets out of the way you can see him there he's cool he sticks its spikes out of his side of his 
face of his cheeks whenever he's eating to warn our fish away. He's pretty cool. Um, and then I got pull that, which is quite a nice little cave system. Uh, artificial rock thing that I like. Um, and then a massive great big piece of slate I've got at the back there. Uh, it's got to be about 30 centimetres long. As you just see, um, I thought it would be a good vertical surface for the angelfish to spawn on, to lay their eggs on. Um, but it turns out they only ever like to do that with the Amazon sword leaves. Um, they haven't used it since I put it in there, but it's a little hidey hole for little fish, which is really important in a community tank. Um, you've got to have the hidey holes and the place for them to get away from those annoying fish like the bloody annoying ruby black barbs um, and other fish that harass like the red tailed black shark um, yeah that's all of my hardware really uh, just annoyed by the state of my tank at the moment and the cyclops that I put in earlier has just clouded it all up but I thought it was doing its job to get rid of it eventually um yeah hopefully useful new useful video if you're thinking about uh what kind of hardware to put in I would 100% recommend that filter I should have I do apologize um not very I'm a novice at uh doing these videos but um features of this uh filter um uh, the fx no ef2 sorry f2 plus is um it has a priming button there as you can see and uh when um when you start up one of these filters it um uh, it has a lot of air in it. You fill, you fill it to the top as best you can, but it needs to have no air in the system. Um, but obviously you can't fill it up to the point where there is no air in it, so you need to release the air. So you plug the filter in and then you just jam down on that button loads of times and it manually pumps the air out and uh, pumps out with the spray bar up there. Um, and I just run it, keep pumping that until um, it uh, until it pumps all the water and all the air out. You end up if you have air in your pump, you it's noisy because you're not your water's your impeller's not um, submerged all the time, so it ends up making weird whooshing noises. So, um, but that makes it really easy. I, before I had this one, I had a cheaper filter. Um, basically, got bought it. It didn't work very well. We sent it back. We ended up with this one. Paid a bit more. Ended up with this one, and it's been incredible ever since. And that didn't have a priming button on it, and it was awful. Um, and the other filter, uh, feature of this is, um, you can see the little indicator there, it's got a UV light. Um, I think I probably need to replace the bulb on it, um, although it looks like it's working, but UV um, does degrade. Um, UV light helps to, in the, in the filter, sterilising any bacteria, um, which is a really good field feature and uh, it's been brilliant since I had it. Um, so yeah, I hope this video has been useful. Um, look out for more. Thanks guys.